The government-controlled broadcasting service had only four months to prepare its radio studios for the new medium. Built during the Depression, the Babylonian-style broadcasting palace has now been Auckland's television centre for 25 years. Ian Watkins was one of the small group transferred from radio to start the television service. He was the announcer on opening night. The first feature film that I introduced was Robin Hood. There were, of course, other overseas films, and on opening night, the Howard Morrison Quartet entertained. We also wanted to do an interview program, but didn't quite know how to introduce the guest. So we had the idea we would call the program On Your Doorstep. There would be a knock on the door. The first guest on the first night was British ballerina Beryl Gray. Mind you, we always pretended we didn't know who it was. It went something like this. Alma, yeah. well, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Do come in. Thank you. Oh, this is great. Let me introduce television's first lady announcer, Alma Johnson. Of course, you started a couple of months after me. What are your memories of your first night? Surprisingly, Ian, I was quite relaxed. I think then one had no idea of the immense power of television. I think we were very fortunate then to begin in those days because we could learn and gain our experience when there were a few television sets about, when perhaps the public too didn't know too much about television and they were learning too and we didn't have too much criticism. There wasn't too much criticism of the first night. The newspaper reviewer called it a dignified, successful entry. A slick and thoroughly professional production. Glitter from Miss Gray's jewellery and reflection from the Morrison's hair oil were the only distraction. By October 1960, AKTV2 was transmitting five nights a week. Local programmes, like the popular marionette theatre of Greer Twiss, were limited to live studio productions. The small band of enthusiastic pioneers devising local programmes included Shirley Maddock. We used to bring things to the studio because we had no way of going outside. So I can remember once we brought a, a sampling from an exhibition of British sculpture from the art gallery and they said it was so valuable we must lock the studio door, which we did when we all went out for tea. We went out to tea as a group between five and six. And when we came back, the door had never been locked before and no one could open it. <laughs> so in the end, I think they took it, took it off the hinges and some way or other we managed to get AKTV2 on the air at 7 o'clock as scheduled. This film shows some aspects of the technical equipment used in the NZBC. The newly commissioned television production studio in Auckland is the largest of its kind in New Zealand. The studio has a floor area of 2,500 square feet and is equipped with a total of three four and a half inch image Orthicon cameras. In the background, the pale blue cyclorama reproduces as a light gray shade in monochrome television. Uh, sets are invariably painted in color as it is important that the working areas of artists and staff be maintained as bright and as interesting as possible. A set storage area adjacent to the studio provides ready access to the studio floor for sets which have been completed. Uh, this scene, taken from the lighting grid, shows a set being prepared for the children's program of Shoes and Ships. cameras are carefully checked to ensure the best possible performance and to obtain a close match between camera shots. A technician adjusts the response of the head amplifier.
Each camera is fitted with an electronic viewfinder. All camera and microphone movements are carefully planned and rehearsed as the appearance of the microphone or camera in the picture may spoil the entire effect of the scene. Any sound arising from the movement of equipment must also be kept to a low level. Wall outlets are provided for microphone connection. Luminaires are attached to battens and adjusted from floor level. The battens are raised to a convenient height above the floor to clear the sets. Raising and lowering the lighting battens is controlled from this panel on the studio floor. Studio luminaires are connected to the lamp dimmers via a patch panel. This arrangement provides a simple and effective means of grouping the lighting for a number of separate sets. Lamp brightness is controlled by silicon controlled rectifier dimmers. Control circuit amplifiers mounted on printed boards are hinged to allow ready access to the SCR units behind. Relays of various kinds are used extensively in the lighting equipment. Ratchet relays control on-air function of each circuit. The dimmer control panel provides control of 60 studio lighting circuits. Lighting for studio productions requires some form of memory to enable the operator to recall any part of a sequence at will. A subsidiary memory bank is provided in the form of a crossbar switch which allows up to 20 predetermined combinations to be achieved. The master panel is simple in conception and provides ready access to all lighting circuits either individually or grouped. The lighting and vision operator's positions are adjacent and with the precise control of studio lighting, a fine adjustment of the camera settings is all that is necessary during a performance. The output signals from studio cameras are monitored and adjusted by the vision operator. Each panel provides remote control of the camera, iris and video gain and lift. The uh, personnel employed at the production desk are the technical director, the vision mixer, the producer, and the script assistant. A bank of picture monitors display the camera outputs and any other video source required for preview. The vision mixer on the left can switch up to 12 inputs to the studio line output. All switching is done remotely in the field blanking interval by semiconductor modules. The remote controls for telecine cameras and videotape recorders appear at the top of the right hand panel with the special effects section of the vision mixer in the lower left. A 24 channel sound mixer console provides mixing facilities, reverberation and special effects for individual sound circuits or groups of circuits. All sound sources are critically monitored by the sound operator in an area separate but adjacent to the production control room. Modular construction is used throughout. Space requirements made it necessary to locate most of the air conditioning plant on the roof. The air conditioning system must work silently and produce a minimum of drafts in the studio area. Unlike its centralized complex at Avalon, television in Auckland is scattered round the town. Here, in this fortress-like building in Shortland Street, once the home of Radio 1YA, it's 2.30. TV2's first program for the day is going to air. Head at Mitnick's.
Who ripped them up? Oh, ripped up by the dude. Were they? Well, who could they have been given to, I wonder? <laughs> yeah, but I want the top copies of story number 10 and story 32, please. Please, please have the top copies of story, story number 10, 10 and, and 32. 32. I stand by. Here we go. Don't squash, please. Sure. I do hope they'll turn them up because I won't read those. Halfway down the story. I'll show you. Will this team, my friend, there goes, never by. on time. Mm. All the best. Uh, you will follow that up for me, won't you, Jimmy? Roll out. Pick card. Take out. Okay. Roll Wellington. Roll Wellington. Take Wellington cue. First the titles. The unemployment figures have been released today, and the downtime Roll continues. Take IQ. Next. Next. And President Reagan speaks out on the Soviet Union and its attitude to the Olympics. Thank you, cut. And stand by one time on roll. Consecutive months and latest figures show that just over 104,000 were out of work or on subsidised schemes. The number of registered unemployed is down by 2,600 since March. 59 has been dropped. Good evening. The Soviet Union tells the world we won't be going to the Los Angeles Olympics. There's still no indication tonight of whether or not Eastern Bloc countries will join the Soviet Union in staying away from the Los Angeles Olympics. Sources in Moscow.